Uh, Hello. <laughs> How's it going? Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, you guys, well, why don't uh, you guys look around? Uh, yeah, this one actually is my mother, and that's my brother, and that's me. That's that. That was 1955 or 56. I can't quite remember. Uh, so your parents were geologists. Yeah, my my well, my dad was geophysicist. My mother uh, was a geologist, and she. Uh, was the first woman to get a PhD from University of Michigan. Uh, there is a problem with the universities with respect to just the uh, fact that there's so much emphasis on raising money and getting grants that these grants can be just kind of factories to get people to crank out the work and the data and so forth rather than looking at uh, people who come up with uh, original insights, original ideas. And I, you know, that's, that's our the National Science Foundation. The, the, the nation has a problem here, and it's not just in geology, but it's in all the sciences on there. So it's the system. You, you know that you don't know nearly as much as the guy next door to you knows. And so you, and better, you need to listen a lot. So that's, you know, I, I, I Philosophy was not really part of it. Failures, oh, lots of failures. <laughs> well, in terms of the technology, I think the worst, the biggest failures you always have on it is in terms of communication. It's very difficult to communicate. And uh, you look back on those things and you say, uh, why didn't I think of it that way or explain it in a different way? and people would have understood it better. Understanding the fluids in the subsurface was just as important as the stratigraphy. And we never really looked at the fluids in the subsurface as an entity, you know. And I thought it was, it, that's, I still think it was the most important thing that I ever came across, that I ever discovered, and I thought it was equivalent to recognizing the scale of a sequence and what these fluids are doing and how they're slopping around in the subsurface. Well, you don't, I don't think you've, in a or, professional organization, you do things that are fun and you don't ever know what's going to come out of it. You do things because they're fun. And if it's not fun to do, don't do that. Find something else that is fun. A AAPG is, a, is, is, is a, it's an organization that communicates what other people do. But AAPG doesn't, uh, it facilitates communication. That's probably a better word. And, uh, but I, you know, it doesn't do science. They, you know, they don't do science and um, they understand they, you know, science, but fundamentally it's a publishing house. You have to realize that school doesn't teach you how to be a geologist for your career. It teaches you how to start. There's sixty percent of the world's production comes from less than one percent of the world's fields. So it's the gets the Mark Twain approach, you know, it's okay to put all your eggs in one basket, but watch that basket. In terms of looking at alternative energy sources, you've got to understand the limits on hydrocarbon supply. How long is it going to last? And at what cost? But this question has been already addressed. Well, it doesn't hasn't it's been a it's been asked, but it hasn't been answered. People don't have confidence in the amount of endowment that's out there because countries are not cooperating. And these, these governments need to understand what their alternatives are. I think it's very irresponsible for politicians to talk about wind as an alternative to oil. This country cannot afford it. We don't have the money. It does not exist. Any thoughts about the relationship global warming and oil companies? Well, I'll, if you look over the past 400 million years, this time that we're in right now is about the coldest the Earth has been over that entire 400 million years. And I think it's pretty, it's, it's a lot of hubris to think that we as homo sapiens are going to control climate. 